In this video, we're gonna see examples of how to calculate development length for straight bars and hooked bars. My name is Tyler Lay, I'm a concrete freak. Let's get to it. Computing development length is actually not that hard once you figure it out. We're gonna work at a problem where we have a cantilever beam with a point load on the end. This dimension into the wall, that's what we're designing, that is the development length. Here's what the cross section looks like. We're using number eight bars that are longitudinal bars. That's at the top, because that's where the tension is. Um, it's 12 inches wide, 20 inches deep. Number eight bar at the top, and we're using number fours at eight inches. I know I apologize up front if you are an SI person, I'm teaching my class, and they are imperial folks so we're gonna move on with the imperial we're using f prime c of 4,000 psi and fy of 60 ksi my internal cover is one and a half inches that means i'm internal inside of a building and i'm using a cover of one and a half inches there are no coatings on the bar this is not those epoxy coated bars these are black steel and that is going to impact our factors we end up using here is our crazy looking equation with all these factors. Let's get to the work. I love to start with the size first and get these things knocked out of the way. The first question is, do I have a top bar effect? Do I have more than 12 inches below the bar? The answer is yes, I do. Therefore, I will be using a side T of 1.3. Now, for my side E of my epoxy coating, so it is an uncoated bar, so I'm using a one here. My side S, that is what size of bar am I using? I'm greater than a number seven, so therefore I will be using one, and I'm using normal weight concrete. Therefore, that is going to be one. Now, I have to start calculating my C sub B equations. Um, this is a little bit different. This is, I, I have to find first what my cover is. So I'm my outside cover, it is a one and a half inches. That is to my diameter of my stirrup. This is the size of the stirrup and this is one half the diameter of a number eight bar. When you calculate all of that, you will get 2.5 inches. Now I have a star here. I have a star here. That means it's kind of a big deal. This is something that we're going to compare later on. This could control, so let's pay attention to it. Now I have to find my bar to bar spacing. It's gonna take a little bit more calculation to do this. This is actually half the clear spacing between the bars. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find my outer bar clear spacing. I'm basically trying to find my spacing between this bar and this bar. To do that, I'm gonna take my total B, which is 12 inches. This is the distance to my cover. That's two times one and a half, because there's cover on each side. Then I have two number four bars. Again, one of those on each side. And then I have four bend radii. This is one bend radii on one side, one bend radii on the other side. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna link another video above so you can check it out where I explain what this is all about. Now, when I calculate all of this, that gives me six inches. That means the spacing from this bar to this bar is six inches. So I wanna find my clear spacing. This is that edge to edge distance between the bars. So I'm gonna take six inches divided by two and that's gonna give me three inches. Then I'm gonna to have to take one half that clear spacing, one half that clear spacing to see what that distance would be for those cracks to form. One half times three is one and a half inches. That is gonna control compared to the star that I showed you before. This one controls. This is the one we're going to use in our final calculations. So now we're we're gonna calculate our KTR. Our KTR is the area of our stirrup. That is the area of a number four bar. Then my yield strength is 60,000. 1500 is a constant. Eight is the spacing of my bars. This is the spacing of my stirrup. And this is the number of bars that I'm trying to confine with this spacing. I calculate a KTR of 0.33. Next, once I start to plug in to everything down here, this is that big nasty equation I showed you before with everything plugged in. Here's all my size at the top. Here's the 1.5, that's the CB that I showed you before that controlled. This is my 1.5, this is my 0.33 divided by one. I calculate all of this and I get 50.5 times the diameter of my bar. 50.5 times the diameter of my bar. My diameter of my bar is one inch. That means this is 50.5 inches. That means if I am going to lay this out, I have my beam here, 
I have my steel in my beam and the embedment length, the distance into the wall that that steel has to be, has to be greater or equal to 50.5 inches. You might say, oh my gosh, that seems huge. How are we gonna do that? Ah, well, if you have to, if you don't have the room, you go to the hook. So I'm gonna work another example problem. This first, I'm gonna use a straight bar, and then I'm gonna show you how to calculate a hook. In this case, instead of going through all the calculations, we're gonna make this a little bit simpler. I'm gonna use a number 11 bar, and I'm gonna use four KSI steel. I'm also gonna assume I'm using 60 KSI for my yield strength of my rebar. So let's look at the straight bar length. So this is the equation I showed you before. You should have seen this. This is the psi t, psi e, psi s, and my gamma, my c sub b plus ktr over db. And there's not a lot of information given. I'm telling you just to assume this cb plus ktr over db is 2.5. Instead of giving you all the numbers like I showed you before, instead of showing you all the calculations like I showed you before, I'm just telling you to use 2.5 to make this a little bit easier. So these are plugging in the numbers that I know. All these things happen to be one. This is 2.5 and I calculate 28.5 times my bar diameter. If I'm using a number 11 bar with a diameter of 1.41, then I will be getting a 40.2 inch embedment length. Yes, the embedment length into the wall is 40.2 inches. Now let's say I don't have that space and I go to my friend, the hook. So 0.02 times my psi e gamma fy, all divided by the square root of f prime c. That is multiplied by the hook factors times the bar diameter. So let's go to town here. So 0.02, here are my psi and my, and my lambda, they are one. I plug in all my other constants and I get 18.97. So I was comparing here 18.97 times the diameter of the bar would be 26.75 inches. Now, if I provided two inches of cover behind the hook, that means if in my structure, when I lay my wall out, it has at least two inches of cover. And that is a great idea anyway. I'm not sure why you would be building something that does not have that. But if you have at least two inches of cover here, then you can reduce this calculation by 0.7. And you can reduce this down to 18.73. So that means if I provide an embedment length greater than 18.73, which is 19 inches, and two inches for this back cover, that would be a 21 inch thick wall. This is all going to work out. I have to also check out 12 bar diameters. That is 17 inches and that is what is going to go here. So all this, the takeaway here is that this dimension is about 19 inches or, you know, about 20 inches or so. And that happens to be one half of what I would get if I used a straight bar. That's why it is extremely common to use hooked bars where you have congestion. Possibly even to use a hook at even further, even a 180 degree hook or a 135 degree hook as well, or possibly to use a straight bar in these cases, again, to try to save space. I hope you enjoyed this video again. My name is Tyler Lay again, and please, I'm gonna ask you again to like, subscribe, and give me your comments below. See you, Concrete Freaks, and of course, check me out on Instagram and the Facebook at concrete.tyler. Bye.